My good friend Buck Boydy sent me a blog and asked me a question. Is it possible to use the semantic kernel to write your own T-SQL and maybe even Python and charts and graphs? And I went, yes. Yes, it is. So coming up next on Tales from the Field, the semantic kernel, part two, writing your own code. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. If this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content by the creators in the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we have our MS Tech Bits. That's one of those videos where we've been inspired by a blog, working with a product group, working with you or a customer, and... Uh, this is what it's about. So let's not waste any more time and get over to that great content. We're going to start out with a wonderful blog, Chat Your Data in Microsoft Fabric with Semantic Kernel by the wonderful Ken Filo. This is over on the Microsoft Fabric blog, and it is in the description of the video. So click on that to find the link and make sure to check that out. Now, what I want you to do is scroll down, and we're going to go to Kenfi's GitHub page. This is going to take you to his sample, but I want you to go to the main GitHub page. We're going to click on Code, and then once we do that, we're going to download the zip. I'm going to show you how we use OneLike to get this up into Microsoft Fabric. All right, we're going to start out at my desktop, and I've got our GitHub zip that I've downloaded and extracted on my D drive. And I'm going to do something different this time. Instead of having a pipeline to be able to upload this, I'm going to go to my one lake, and I'm going to browse to my lake house. I'm just going to copy my data skills folder over to the skills folder I've already created from our last one right next to read skills. I'm also going to bring over our data set as well. And then I'm going to click sync from one lake. Then I go over to my lake house and magic, my data sets and my skills are already there. So I look, there's my data skill. I can look, I see my CSV, my Spark, my SQL. And under my data sets, uh, I could take a look and there's my sales and my product DMV. As a matter of fact, three clicks, I can take my sales CSV and load it in as a table. Magic. Again, just absolutely amazing how quick I can do some of these things. Looking at the columns that I have and the table, it's all nice in there. Let's head over to our notebook. First thing I'm going to do a little different from the blog is I'm going to use the same pip command we used last time. I got some errors on the pip command from this time, and I just wanted to make sure I use something that I knew that worked. After that, we're going to import our SK model and then we're uh, our semantic kernel, and then we're going to import the OpenAI Azure Chat completion. Now, we've got two models here, you may notice, model one and model two. We're going to get to that. Don't worry. Uh, model one is what we're using right now. It's our chat GPT 3.5 Turbo, uh, and we're going to run that, and then we're going to do our kernel add chat. We're going to invoke our endpoint on our uh, model deployment and our API key. We're going to point to our base level skills where we've got our data skills already, um, and we're going to read those. And you'll notice I've got this equal skills commented out. We will get back to that. Next, I'm going to load the product list into a data frame. Super easy to do. I just point to my lake house default files to the CSV. And then can we visualize code? Let's generate a bar chart. List product type. Display the number of products owned by the corresponding product type. But nothing came out. Let's try and figure out why. Let's print the Panda SQL statement. Nothing. Uh, let's try and see if we comment out the exec and then print panda. Still nothing. Okay, let's take a look at the panda result frame because clearly we aren't getting the result I would expect that we would get. Let's see. What do we have? An error. Uh, models max context for tokens has been exceeded. Okay, now in the blog, Kinfi uh, uses a ChatGPT 4.0 model. I don't have access to ChatGPT 4.0. However, I do have 3.5 Turbo 16K. That provides more tokens for us. So if I redo this, redo my base skills, then I come in and do my import again of my data just to validate. Then I run. What do we get? Magic. The tokens equal the number of characters. My question was too big, but the ChatGPT uh, 3.5 16 Turbo allowed me to be able to just ask a question and we were able to invoke a graph, a graphical response of our data. That's really cool. 
Okay, so now that we've got this in place, I can also just ask it a question and say, return this as a table, and it returns my different car audio product types as well. So let's switch over to Spark, and we're going to load up our sales data. And then we're going to see, can we query a data frame? So we validated our data is there. We're going to ask a question, search order dates, uh, July 1st, 2019, and count sales order line item. And we have nine sales for that particular date. Now, the next thing we could do is we could say, hey, generate a T-SQL statement for me that specifically gives me the count on the item quantity sales. Now, we get an error right here. And the error is actually pretty simple. In the blog, this was not included. It was not included to add the SQL skills. But the, it's in the GitHub repository. It's all there. It invokes it in the code. We just need to come back up here. And I'm going to point our base skills. Um, and once I refresh the base scales in the notebook, we should be able to come down here and we can run this. So now we're saying generate this SQL statement. There's a couple issues with this SQL statement right off the bat. So you can see it asked for my data source um, and that should be my lake house name. I, I didn't put that in there, but the other problem is the sales. It's pulling that from the question and my sales table is lowercase. This sales table is uppercase this is not going to work out the way that I want it to, but it didn't even alias it. It could have aliased it, my data source dot or baseball underscore lake house dot, but it didn't. Um, so what this made me do is it made me go, okay, maybe we need to look at the prompt a little bit more closely. Um, so that way we can actually figure out what's going on on here. Same thing we had to do last time. So let's head over. And first off, you can see no item uh, column in here. We need to see if we can fix this in some way, shape, or form. So once we go to our lake house, we'll go to our files. Uh, we're going to go down to our SQL folder because that's the skill we're using, SK prompt. This doesn't look bad. It's saying, hey, generate data, understand T-SQL, but I've already worked on this a bit. Under my Brad Skills folder, I've got an SK prompt. And what I did was I added specifically that I wanted to specify a data source and a table name. And I said, do not suggest columns that are not in, that do not exist in the data source. So I made this change. And instead of changing this uh, and then re-uploading the folder, I can just go into one link. I can open up my Brad skills, reskills, do a copy. And then I'm going to hop straight over to my lake house where I've got my current skill, save it, do a sync. Um, and then all I have to do is run this because it's already going to point to that folder. It'll pull in a new context. Now, I also added single quotes around row dash 150 red. I felt like that was a bit of a distraction where it was breaking that into two columns. And once I did that, you can see I properly got the sales table and we've got our data. So what did we cover? Well, we covered a lot. We talked about how you can use the semantic kernel to be able to create charts and graphs and your own SQL statements to be able to run against your lake house. We also, again, dove into prompt engineering because when we're going to start using these models to create copilot-like systems, we need to jump into prompt engineering and make sure we understand the, the question. I don't think I got that second one perfect, but the nice thing is we've talked about this multiple times on how you can play around with it, and I leave this up to you so you can have some fun with it. All right, sound off. Any questions, anything we didn't cover that you're interested in? We would love to hear from you. Please let us know. Your feedback helps drive us in our next creations. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Uh, be good to one another. Take care, everybody. Bye. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concepts.